He's not in the outcome business. He has no business. Do you know what history does to people? Trained physicians who ignore science. Oh, wow. Scott, I am not done. History laughs. If you continue to deny my work, the world will deny my work. But men, your men, continue to die. Their families left in ruins. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Wow, that was a look at the new film, Concussion, based on the true story of Dr. Bennett Omalu, the forensic neuropathologist who made the first discovery of chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE, in a pro football player. Dr. Omalu joins us now, along with the writer and director of the new film, Peter Landisman. Thank so, you both. So, this is something we've been talking about around the table for quite some time. I've got to say, though, Peter, I wasn't so sure when I first heard about yeah. the movie that it was going to do as well as it did. This is obviously something that's really impacting people. They're going to see this movie. It's getting great reviews. It's having an impact. It is. You know, it's a, it's a strange thing. It's a zeitgeist issue where we weren't just reading about it on the front pages of newspapers. It's, you know, we, we confront it every week, every Sunday now during football season and Super Bowl Sunday. It's, yeah. you know, football is not just a sport. It's like part of our national tapestry. And this is a thing that goes right to the heart of it. What are we really doing by watching and playing football? And Bennett's story the the immigrant story the classic American dream tale is just an amazing emotional ride to carry this issue it's a strange confluence of events and then what started with one diagnosis has now just exploded and it just it's doesn't real. matter who, who I, I won't mention any names but we were just talking about people that we see on TV now and it's so sad seeing how it's impacting so many NFL players yes uh, you know th this is not a anti-football or anti-sports. This is about um, any human activity whereby your head is exposed to repeated blows. There is uh, a significant risk of permanent brain damage in children, in adults. And it has this long latent period that sometimes could be up to 40 years later. It's all you could play football, ice hockey, boxing, mixed martial arts as a child, mm -hmm. seven, eight, nine years old. You forget you've played, and then 10 years later, 15 yeah, years later, you begin to manifest, you know, symptoms like loss of intelligence, mood disorders, severe depression, chronic alcoholism. Right. So uh, we obviously have talked a lot on this show about the impact on the game overall that, mm. that could be playing out, especially over the next few years. I'm just wondering, doctor, as a parent, small children, do you do you suggest football or do you stay away from the sport? Well, you, um, you know, the op-ed I wrote in the New York mm -hmm. Times, knowing what we know now, like we've done with smoking, with alcohol, even with sex, we have an age of concern before a child could be allowed to engage in dangerous activities. Mm -hmm. So I think as a, a modern society, it's our moral duty to begin to discuss whether we should allow our children to become exposed to repetitive blows. And it's not just in sports, high impact contact sports, mm -hmm. also parents that have the habit of smacking their children on mm -hmm. the head, domestic violence, the partners and spouses who have the habit of slamming their spouse's heads, we should begin to think about uh, changes uh, in behavior. And again, I think this movie is about that great American story. I, when I was a child in Nigeria, I believed America was the country on earth that was closest to what God wants us to be as his sons and daughters. Um, it, it's about that one net, that, that one hope, one love, one joy. Where we are evolving as a society, and as we evolve, we're becoming more intelligent. So we begin to give up less intelligent ways we did things in the past no. and embrace the promise of the future. Mike, uh, when, when we, when we, Mika, as a doctor about young kids, when you see Brett Favre, John Elway, other NFL superstars who owe their life to the game of football saying they're not going to let their kids play football, 
Well, that, I mean, that changes things. The, the, the scope and the size of the play is just over the last 15 or 20 years. They're so much bigger now, faster now, Ooh. stronger now, uh, that it has become much more violent. Uh, both when you watch it on TV, obviously, but when you see it in person at a lower level down on the field, the sound, the impact of the collisions are truly frightening. A guy, a guy yeah, 250 pounds yeah. can run a 4640. Yeah, yeah, with it's the insanity. NFL strong drug policy. Yeah. But yeah. The, the, well, what, the, the narrative of your story and the narrative of the movie, w one of the reasons it really works and is so powerful is it's kind of a detective story with obstacles thrown in front of the investigator, you, uh, and you're confronted by a powerful institution, the National Football League, and it's you against the NFL, and you bringing it out on, on film. Would you agree with that narrative? Yeah, it's a, in a lot of ways, it's a classic American tale. It's a David versus Goliath, man versus machine, one man against the giant institution to get to the truth. There's something deeply emotional and, and, and classically American about the story. You know, we um, I don't know about Bennett. I, you know, I played through two years of college football. I sh everybody's pain. On Thanksgiving Day, I think about lions and cowboys, and I do on Christmas, and I host so Super Bowl parties. This is a complicated contradiction. Mm -hmm. It's a problem for all of us. Even if we watch the game, right. are we complicit? Just sure. surely by sitting down and, and taking in the the, the it's a religion. Exactly. Right. Well, and, and and when you're watching the Super Bowl or when you're watching the game, something, and you basically just mentioned. The games, the two days I actually sit down and watch NFL yeah. games still. What I, are you really I, watching? Yeah, exactly. One in three. One in three NFL players may be suffering from that. Number is gonna, that's a very conservative number that was actually elicited specifically by the end. That number is going to be very low. That number is going to double. Oh, my goodness. The NFL has known about this for a very long time. Oh. And, this, and every Sunday, we participate in a cover-up. And they have done so for about 20, 25 years. And I have to say that, not as, a, not as a dig, but as part of the story, they knew how dangerous concussions were 20 years ago, and they sat on it. While, uh, while players continue to feel the effects. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right, concussion is in theaters uh, Christmas Day. Peter Landisman and Dr. Bennett Omalu, thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank Congratulations. You.